Hey guys and girls, how's it going? I'm back today and this is another Kate's Comments video and uh, I've got Dante here with me because hey, he wants to get in on this, he's a proper Yorkshire lad. <laughs> and uh, this is in response to an article that was written in the Sun newspaper and that article was called Gaming as Addictive <laughs> as Heroin? Yeah, really? sure is. So, um, <laughs> some of you, if you're American, you might not know, but The Sun is basically the shittest newspaper in the UK, and it is notorious <laughs> for writing really, like, scaremongering, exaggerated kind of news news uh, reports. So this one, anyway, so this is what they've said in The Sun. So apparently, it's news to me, but apparently, Britain is in the grip of a gaming addiction. <laughs> Did you know that, Dante? This cannot be. <laughs> so apparently this poses a big health risk, as big a health risk as alcohol and drug abuse. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. So anyway, so basically, uh, you know, the Sun, of course, they're, they're, you know, they're a newspaper and they're trying to have, you know, journalistic integrity. So they have had <laughs> some evidence that they've thrown forward. Um, and they basically the evidence that they've included in this article to prove their claim is that apparently one London-based clinic claims to have received 5,000 calls a year from parents seeking help for their child's gaming addiction. And the interesting point here is it's the parents calling, yeah. not the person with the actual addiction. Mm. And if any gaming person knows their parents, they don't really understand video gaming. No, after a certain generational gap, no. no. Like my mum, for example, she doesn't get it. Bless no. her. My, mine's She's like, you're playing games again? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, like, these parents obviously don't really get or understand video gaming, so I wouldn't use them as a good source. Um, other evidence that it puts forward is it's, it claims that uh, there is a link, somehow, between Call of Duty and three suicides. Is the game that bad? Apparently. <laughs> um, it doesn't actually say how many, what these links are or where this evidence has come from, so that's a little bit shady if you ask yeah. me. Um, they also have they also show research that's been done and apparently it's been proven that dopamine levels increase in the brain when you play video games, <laughs> especially when you're playing violent video games. So if you're playing Grand Theft Auto V, you're feeling pretty happy. <laughs> So it's just stupid because dopamine levels increase for anything. Yeah. So doctors have said, you know, if you eat certain foods, if you do exercise, all these things increase your dopamine levels. So video games is nothing new there with that. Now they have put forward about three case studies and they've actually thrown in some names in there. And they've used a professor. This professor, his name is Dr. Mark Griffiths. Griffiths. Uh, and he is the director of... <laughs> <laughs> International Gaming Research Unit at Nottingham Trent University. Didn't even know that existed. No. Um, but yeah, so he actually gave them a foolproof 10 question questionnaire to see if you're an addict. <laughs> so apparently within this newspaper, if you answer these 10 questions and they're yes or no answers, if you answer seven out of those 10 questions, <laughs> yes, you must be a video game addict. Question one, do you like video games? <laughs> Yes. So it's really stupid. But you could literally, that's so silly. Like, something so complex as addiction can be categorized so simply with something like that. And, like, you could just replace the word video game with anything. So I could put the word cats in there. Are you addicted to cats? Are you addicted? Yes, I love cats. But, you know, if I answered, like, yes to seven of those questions, I'm addicted to cats. <laughs> I I'll, see this I'll admit, I I'm addicted see to Grumpy Cat. I like Grumpy, Grumpy cat. cat and Piano Cat. Keyboard Cat, yes. Keyboard Cat, they're cute, they're cool, I'm pretty addicted to them. Except Nyan I Cat. I can have cheeseburger and I hate Nyan Cat. Oh. <laughs> um, so let me give you some facts, God. journalists at the God. sun. I'm going to pull up my sleeves here. Journalists. <laughs> I'm going to show you real journalism. So did you know, right, that in 2011 in the UK alone, there were 1,584 confirmed cases of deaths relating to drug, drug abuse? The idiots. Mm, that's quite a lot. That's a lot. And in terms of alcohol in the same year, there were 8,748 alcohol-related deaths uh, as well. Do you know how many there were for video game-related deaths? I've got a good guess. Is it zero? It's zero. <laughs> There's yeah. been nothing proved to do with that. So I think it's so ridiculous that you can compare drug addiction and drug abuse and drugs like heroin and cocaine yeah, and alcohol, and yeah. alcohol <laughs> to video games. Yeah, it's no. ridiculous. They're not the same thing. Uh, nowhere near. So, like, you know, you can't overdose from playing video games. 
Except that one guy in career. Okay, <laughs> okay. On. Well, all right. Video games and career is pretty serious. And I will admit, there probably are some people out there that do have a degree of addiction to video games. Yeah, like that one guy in career that, like, Warcraft didn't... Warcraft the hell out of ...was life. playing the World of Warcraft and forgot to <laughs> eat and then died. But He's got other issues. The planet obviously did not need that person for that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that probably happened. But they're a small minority. Yeah. The majority of people play video games sensibly, mm. I would Pleasure. say. Entertainment. Exactly. Mm. They don't forget to eat. <laughs> or shower, hopefully. <laughs> but, you know, you don't know. But anyway, so like you can't overdose from playing video games. It doesn't matter how much Call of Duty you play. It doesn't matter how many times you get killed or how many headshots your brain is not gonna explode no. you, you know you're not gonna overdose from not it really. it's, it's not gonna have the same physical and mental effects or damages that alcohol or drugs mm. is gonna have so i think it just really shows that the journalists <laughs> at the sun are lazy desperate for gossip or news i mean this this thing was a front page title <laughs> like, this cost england's out of the world how, yeah how you yeah, must be <laughs> How desperate can you be if this is your front page what? title? Like, they got no good news to report on, apparently. Not journalism, though. Oh my god, yeah. ridiculous. They're not going to win a Pulitzer Prize, are they? <laughs> For me, I think this is just your typical kind of scaremongering. It's happened yeah. this time and time and again where video games are attacked by the media yeah. and they're kind of used as a scapegoat for kind of the issues and problems that we have in society so you know whenever there is kind of a, a teen suicide or behavioral problems or a tragic event like for example yeah. the um the sandy hook shootings in america oh, yeah. or like recently in britain we've had um a, a terrible tragedy which is where a high school teacher Anne mcguire um, in a Leeds high school, she was stabbed by a 15-year-old student. And straight away, the news media jumped straight onto that, and they were like, oh, it's video games! That 15-year-old boy, he listened to heavy, heavy metal music, oh and he played World of Warcraft. Ooh. That's why he stabbed her. <laughs> Criminal, well, criminal. <laughs> stupid. Um, and it's just, it's, it's lazy. It yeah. is lazy. And it's because it's much easier for people to scapegoat kind of yeah. an, an inanimate object like blame video gaming. Like blame something like that. It's much easier for them to comprehend it, yeah. to cope with it, to come to terms with it, mm -hmm. when you can lay blame there, yeah. rather than facing the real issue, which is that... The kids messed up in the head. Yeah, and these, these people, these individuals should take responsibility for their actions mm, yeah. and they already had serious issues and problems mentally mm. even before they even picked up a video <laughs> game um, the video game is not what made them do it they were going to yeah. do it anyway so again it's just just a, another case of video games being attacked by the media being mm. scapegoat and that, that's just because they don't understand video games they don't mm. get it maybe they've never played a video game before in their life <laughs> maybe they hated their childhood who knows <laughs> But like they they don't understand video games. They don't understand why people enjoy playing them, what it's all about, yeah. and you attack what you don't understand. It's just ignorance. Pretty much. Ignorance well, they, breeds well, they wouldn't ignorance. Be writing such tripe. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Now for me, I'm tired of this. I'm so tired of the media constantly attacking video <laughs> game the video games industry yeah. and blaming it. You know what I mean? And I just think it's ridiculous. I. I I would like to see more, <laughs> I'm dreaming here, but I'd like to see more positive news. Oh, that would be great. Sure, right. yeah, it's never going to happen. But I'd like to see more positive news on video games. Video games can have a lot of positive mental and um, health effects yeah. on people. Like, for example, in terms of your brain, like it can actually help develop your brain and grow and grow and expand i mean look at all like the the amount of imagination the amount of creativity involved in a lot of games as well you've got a lot of like um strategic thinking strategy puzzle solving coordination all these things are going to strengthen your brain muscles mm. so you're going to think a lot more critically a lot more analytically all those things are good things and that coordination yeah also, yeah like exactly that. yeah and so like it's also good for people as well that do have stress in their life and we all have stress in our life we mm. all live very very stressful yeah. lives and sometimes video games can be a healthy way for you to vent that frustration mm. and that 
sense of powerlessness that you might have in your life. Yeah, a bit you of know. escapism. Yeah, it's nice. a little bit of escapism, and, and it, it can be a good way. Like, oh my god, if I've had a really stressful day, I will just be like, kill all the NPCs. <laughs> but it's certainly healthier than turning yeah. to alcohol or turning <laughs> to drugs, and stuff. drugs. A lot of people as well, um, if they've got insecurities or issues, a lot of people also find um, their own story or their, they relate to characters within stories. Yeah. Um, so for me, um, I'd like to see more positive spins on video games personally. Unfortunately, I can't see that happening because it's the news, isn't it? good news, good news yeah. doesn't sell, bad news sells. So I can't see the sun really changing their minds on this. Um, but for me, this this article is just a, it's just ridiculous. It's just a farce, isn't it? And more reason why I avoid news lately these days. Yeah, and it's um, and it's a lot of people really don't take the sun seriously. <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh God, Jesus. <laughs> so um, you know. You can bet a lot of people when they saw this article didn't really take it seriously, but unfortunately there is a mass majority of people that will lap this up. Yeah. Um, and will take it as as um, fact. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh and, and this video basically is my response to those people and saying why I think this is wrong. So anyway, that those are my thoughts on this article. Um, so what do you guys think of this article? What's your opinion on it? Speak. Um, please, yeah, speak. Let your thoughts be known. And uh, please post your comments in the space below if you want to share your ideas with the rest of the internet. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, you like this conversation or the, this reaction, please hit that like button to show your support, get this video more out there. And uh, if you're interested in seeing more, please go ahead and slap that subscribe button. Mm. All right, guys. <laughs> Yay! Slap, it, slap Subscribe it. button. <laughs> slap the subscribe button. All right. <laughs> Have a great day, guys and girls, and we will catch you later. Johnny. Bye. Yeah. As big a health risk as alcohol and drug abuse. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. So anyway, so basically, uh, you know, the Sun. Of course, they're they're you know they're a newspaper and they're trying to have you know journalistic integrity. So they have had <laughs> some evidence that they've thrown forward, um, and they basically the evidence that they've included in this article to prove their claim is that apparently one London-based clinic claims to have received 5,000 calls a year from parents seeking help for their child's gaming addiction. The interesting point here is it's the parents calling, yeah. not the person with the actual addiction. Mm. And if any gaming person knows their parents, they don't really understand video gaming. No, after a certain generational gap. No, no. to get in on this, he's a proper Yorkshire lad. <laughs> and uh, this is in response to an article that was written in the Sun newspaper. And that article was called Gaming as Addictive <laughs> as Heroin? Yeah. Really? Sure is. So, um... <laughs> Some of you, if you're American, you might not know, but The Sun is basically the shittest newspaper in the UK. And it is notorious <laughs> for writing really, like, scaremongering, exaggerated kind of news news uh, reports. So this one, anyway, so this is what they've said in The Sun. So apparently, it's news to me, but apparently, Britain is in the grip of a gaming addiction. <laughs> Did you know that, Dante? This cannot be. <laughs> so apparently this poses a big health risk. Hey guys and girls, how's it going? I'm back today and this is another Kate's comments video and I've got Dante here with me because he wants...